Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on how to build your own race car. Today we're going to be building the rear wing for our Formula 1000 race car using the same moldless process we used to make the front wing. We start out with the foam cores already cut. In this case, I glued two of the foam cores side by side because my hot wire foam cutter is not long enough to cut the entire wing in one piece. So I glued the two pieces together and then we're going to be coating it with four layers of 200 gram per square meter fiberglass cloth and epoxy resin. We put down the four layers on one side first, making sure that they're smooth and straight and we work the resin into them and let them pile up at the leading edge of the wing. And in a minute we'll be turning the wing over and laminating the cloth onto the bottom of the wing. This way is one solid piece all the way across which provides all the strength we need and the cut in the fiberglass really won't have any effect. We'll lay some plastic sheet over it so that it won't stick down to the table. Get it as smooth as we can. And we put the cast off piece from the cutting on the other side so it will support it nicely at every point. And we wet out the styrofoam with the epoxy resin. And one by one we start laying out the, the fiberglass cloth onto the surface, wetting it out, working the resin in, always making sure that we don't have any excess resin. We try to get out all the extra resin to make it as light as possible. Any resin beyond the mineral amount just makes it heavier, but not stronger. So as you can see, we take a good amount of time to make sure that the strands of the fiberglass cloth are straight in both the X and the Y directions, giving us the best overall look. So once we get all those layers laminated down, we take that plastic and we smooth it over the surface, and then we'll take the other half of the original styrofoam block that we cut off and use it to clamp down on the wing. And then we put a piece of plywood on top of it, put some weights on top of that, and let it cure overnight. The next day, we're ready to take a look at it. We remove the weights and lift off the plywood board. And unfortunately, the plastic stuck to the plywood board a little bit. I should have waxed the plywood board, but uh, I didn't think that the resin would overflow that much. So I had to use a springy spatula to pry all the way around it. And after that, it just popped right off. Then we take off the supporting box. And we reveal the airflow shape inside. As you can see, it's light, strong, and hard. Now we're peeling off the peel ply that we used to protect it. And there's our first view of the raw wing. You can see the surface left behind by the plastic is reasonable. It's got some wrinkles in it, but it will need some sanding, which will make it lighter anyway. Now we're going to start building the rear wing end plates. We start out with a couple sheets of uh, half inch thick um, styrofoam. Lay out the shape of the end plates on the styrofoam and then cut them to shape using our uh, hot wire foam cutter. Checking and double checking and making sure that both sides are the same. Now the end plates are thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. For the uh, proper resonant frequency, we need the th stiffness that would be afforded by a thicker, wider bottom. So we're cutting a separate set of pieces which will be laminated onto the styrofoam at the bottom. 
You can see it there. And this will be all sanded down and smoothed out in a minute. Now we're spraying spray-on adhesive on the styrofoam and gluing the blocks together. Now we take it outside and we start sanding. This is just styrofoam, so it sands very easily. I'm using 80 grit uh, wet or dry paper with uh, about an 11 inch sanding block to give us nice straight lines. So we sand it down, so we're going to completely smooth out that bottom block so it's an e even taper from the bottom to the top. Now we're rounding the leading edge. Both sides, inside and outside. And now we're fairing out the trailing edge. We're going to fair this quite a way in. So it gives a somewhat like a wing profile, something like an airfoil. True airfoil shape would be better because it will uh, uh, cause the air to not separate from the end plates if the car starts sliding sideways, as we do a little bit even in every corner. We want the air to stick to the end plates, just like you want it to stick to an, airfoil, to an airfoil and not stall. So once we got them cut to shape, smoothed out, we wet out the end plates with epoxy resin and start laying on the fiberglass. Once again, we're putting on a 200 gram per square meter fiberglass, several layers. You can count the layers if you want. This is a complete video. Working as fast as I can to try to get this done before the epoxy starts hardening. In fact, it starts hardening uh, maybe halfway through the process, but it's still workable. So once again, we try to get the X and the Y threads straight and smooth and flat. Work the epoxy in and scrape off all the excess epoxy at each layer. And then at the end, uh, we do, do extra scraping. There's several layers here, quite a few layers of fiberglass because these need to be stiff enough to uh, avoid the rear wing wobbling from side to side as the car goes over bumps. This was tested out with finite element analysis to make sure we got the proper thickness to the wing or to the end plate and the proper number of layers. Now we just use a garbage bag, smooth it out on top of the last layer of fiberglass, and then flip the whole thing over, get the top layers out of the way, go down to the bottom layer, wet out the styrofoam first, and then start going one by one through all the layers to laminate them onto the other side of the end plate. Gotta get every bubble out. And all the excess epoxy removed. It starts to pile a little bit at the front end, the leading edge, but that can be uh, cleaned up at the end. You need to pull tight on the cloth as it goes around the leading edge so that you don't get any wrinkles or other imperfections at the leading edge. The trailing edge is just held flat and will be trimmed off afterwards, as will the top edge and the bottom edge. 
So the only thing we're really concerned about is the leading edge. Scraping, scraping, scraping. Get all that excess resin out of there. I would do some touch up on the leading edge, getting the excess resin out of there, and fold our garbage bag over it and smooth it down as much as we can to get a good finish on the resin. Now we've let it cure overnight, and we've peeled off the plastic, and we are trimming the edges. We're just trimming the trailing edge. We're going to make a rough cut on the top and the bottom edges. This will be cut more precisely later on, once we get everything fitted onto the diffuser and onto the car so we know the correct height. Formula 1000 has a maximum height regulation, and the top of the end plate will exactly match that. So now it's time to sand using the pneumatic double action sander, smooth out all those wrinkle lines. Now we're cutting it at the bottom to match the diffuser. We had to make mounting points on the top of the diffuser using epoxy uh, resin filled with micro balloons to fit it onto an aluminum angle iron which will form the bottom end of the end plates. Once the angle is, is fitted on, then we added lightness by drilling holes everywhere, some all the way through and some only part way through, so that we could have the maximum area for uh, attaching fiberglass cloth to it later on. So here's the first trial fitting on top of the diffuser, just using a styrofoam block to get our uh, length, our width I should say. Now we're going to start on the end plates for the actual airfoil itself. These are two pieces of aluminum that will uh, be laminated to the airfoil and then bolted to the end plates. So we use our standard technique of printing out the shape on uh, sticker paper using a laser printer and sticking that onto the aluminum and cutting it to shape with an angle grinder and a belt sander and whatever other tools are handy. Then we glue it onto the end of the airfoil shape. So here we're doing the gluing and now we're going to reinforce the uh, top side of the joint with two inch wide pre-cut uh, fiberglass cloth. Working the epoxy resin into the cloth, scraping out all the excess. So we're going to let the top side cure before we try to turn it over and do the bottom side. You can see that the end plates are held in place using heavy pieces of uh, about one inch thick steel. Those are just uh, weights. Now we have to laminate fiberglass over the top of the end plate also. So we laid the tape over the top and then used peel plier to run around the edges and stick it down with some clamps and tongue depressors to hold everything in place. Now we're going to peel off the duct tape and the peel ply that held everything down and take a look at the top of the end plate. Now here's the first test fitting of the wing in the end plates. Um, now that allowed us to drill the holes now we're going to reinforce the joint between the uh, bottom of the end plate and the aluminum angle. It was glued on there earlier, but uh, now we're going to use, I believe, four inch wide uh, fiberglass tape. And we're covering the entire area of the aluminum to get the maximum area for, to stick the tape onto. You don't want that to delaminate because this will be a high stress area when it's actually being used on the race car. So I think about four layers of cloth here. Once again, using the uh, purchased rolls of fiberglass cloth, it's so much easier than trying to cut it yourself. Cutting fiberglass is a pain. You don't do that unless you have to.
And the uh, second amendment plate is the same process as the first. Now we let it cure and we flip them over and we're going to reinforce the other side. Here we don't have quite such so much area to grip onto, so we're using the two inch wide fiberglass tape. So same number of layers on both sides of the loop. At the front edge, we uh, use quite a bit of it to cover the entire area of aluminum. Using the plastic spatula to push the cloth into the 90 degree angle there. And then here's the second end plate. Same process as the first one. Now we have starter holes for the mounting points of the wing onto the end plates. We're drilling those out with a one inch drill so that we can mount aluminum hard points in there. Here we're making the aluminum hard points. First we uh, drill out the aluminum to the proper diameter. Then we tap it, tap it on the lathe using the tailstock as a center for the, uh, for the hand tap. Turning about half a turn each time and then backing it off so we don't break the tap. Now we use our homemade uh, angle iron, our angle grinder cutter to cut them to length. Then we glue them into the end plates and cover them with a couple of layers of fiberglass cloth. Then we go through several iterations of priming and sanding and priming and sanding and finally put on our top layer of two part epoxy paint and have it all mounted on the car. So that's how you can build a rear wing with no molds. I hope you enjoyed the video and please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment if you'd like and see you again soon.